Geron, can you hear me? You're safe now. Let me show you the final chapter in Sadja's journey. It's important that you understand what happened back then. That you understand me. Two days after the Flying Fortress had left Draconia, we finally reached the battlefield. Or as the clerics preferred to call it, the vestibule of the Nether Hells. Oh, so this is where they took you. I've been looking for you for days. Ah! Oh. Another hit. I better hurry. No, it's totally blunt. Pretty much useless. I need something better. It's firmly locked. It's behind thick glass. It's hanging too high. That won't get me anywhere. I can't get the blade around the corner to cut through the loops. I should forget trying to hit anything with this. The mace is too thick to stick on the throwing star. A strange construction, but perhaps I can use it to reach places that were inaccessible before. It's heavier than it looks. It's not intended to fit, but it works. I can't swing the halberd well enough. I really had to force the mace into the scabbard. I'll take the thing apart first.
Then, I'll tie one end to the weapons rack. And I'll fasten the other end to the cabinet. I could push it, but where? Charizard, at last, where have you been? There's no time to explain. We're in the middle of the war and Kasim is about to take over the fortress. The clerics are trying to keep him out of the flotation chamber. But who knows how long they'll be able to. A flotation chamber, Princess? It's the heart of the Flying Fortress. It keeps us all in the air. Kasim believes that if he alters one of the floating crystals the way the researcher changed my ruby, he can read all of the memories from the mask, and thus all the spells of the Djinn of Time. A complicated plan for a simple-minded soul. But you'll stop him, won't you? You can count on it. Awaken the floating crystal! Thanks. You're welcome, Princess. You finally reached your goal, mistress. The great battle against the demons. Yes, but the worst of them is not a demon. Looks like we've come too late. Kasim did this. That swine. Looks like we've come too late. Princess. Ariakos, are you all right? You've come too late. He has almost succeeded. Do you still have my dagger? It's hanging on my belt. We tried to bless it, but it was as if the gods refused to do it. As if they had turned their backs on you. So it's come to this. Now even the gods punish me with their contempt. Then all that's left to me is my magic. Um, Princess? What? I'm afraid that the combined presence of the Prince and the Crystals makes it difficult for me to perform any sort of magic. You'll have to touch him if you want to enchant him. First the gods and now this? Then that's how it'll have to be. You can't in all seriousness. Intend to go into battle, armed only with a dagger? As if it had ever been any other way. Ow! Who dares disturb me? Who do you think? Satya! <laughs> You're alive! You can't get rid of me that easily. Oh, girl, leave me in peace. Ow! Who do you think you are? This ends now. Watch, Sadhya, as I subjugate this chamber to my will forever. Princess, I have something else for you. You can't overcome him, as long as he has that magic shield around him. Its power is fed by the main crystal, 
and the five small floating crystals in the towers. What if I switched off the crystals? Then he'll become weaker, and his shield smaller. Take this key for the left floating tower, but hurry! He's becoming more powerful by the minute! Thank you. He's still carrying his scepter. Now, hurry! Deactivate the floating crystals in the towers. That's the only way we can defeat him. He's got nothing left except his belt. He's got a quill. Not a great substitute for a sword, but what choice do I have? We're in the lower chamber of the left tower. Nothing happened. You shouldn't get too close to them. Hmm, that probably isn't magical enough. What happened? I drained the stone's power. The tower must have sunk a bit in the process. Go outside and have a look. The tower is up again. Kasim's presence weakens me. You must touch the crystal with your own hand so I can cast the spell. You shouldn't get too close to them. I can't get close enough. Kasim's arms are disgustingly agitated. First, I need an item from him. The tower is down again.
What happened to the exit? When you extinguished the crystal above. The tower came down a level. The exit is now closed off. If you want to leave, you'll have to awaken the power again. The tower is up again. Can't get close enough. Kasim's arms are disgustingly agitated. They grow back together in an instant. The tower is down again. Let's see what happens if I tie the crystal on here. The belt yanked the crystal off the pedestal. It'll stay down here now. The tower is up again. If that's what it takes. They're not easily diverted from their prey. Ah! Princess, what's wrong? He's in my head. <laughs> Has your past caught up to you? Don't let him confuse you. It's only a game. A dark illusion to break you. None of it is real. Try to think about what you really see and the deceit will vanish. It's only an illusion. Tell me what's really here. Here is... a torch bracket. Here is... a suit of armor. Here is a statue. Here is a shield. In this place is 
nothing. I'm afraid my spell... Kasim's presence weakens me. You must touch the crystal with your own hand so I can cast the spell. When you extinguish the crystal above, the tower came down a level. The exit is now closed off. The tower is down again. I better not get too close. I better not get too close. For that, you'd have to get very close to him. As long as the prince is connected with just one crystal, I can only influence things in my immediate vicinity. It keeps the entire fortress up in the air. As long as Kasim is connected to it, he controls everything here. The tower is up again.
The tower is down again. That puts an end to your little spectacle. Ow! I suppose after all these years you've finally done it. You have defeated me. Do you really think I spent the last 15 years thinking about nothing other than how to defeat you? You're even more vain than I thought. I thought you wanted to outdo me. I'm not here because of you. I'm here so my great deeds can go down in history. <laughs> what great deeds? Don't even start. As you wish. If words cannot injure you, take this! <laughs> I thought I would let you win. But if that doesn't matter to you, then I might as well just destroy you. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Do you really think your paltry magic can touch me in any way? Yes, squirm while you may. I'm in your mind now. I'll shred everything I can find. Soon, nothing will be left of your miserable existence. <laughs> you have won. You have defeated me. You've destroyed the greatest temple the world has ever seen. Death will now rain down on the troops. No one will survive to tell of your terrible deed. Soon, none of what you've done will count for anything. You must be proud of yourself, for you have won. You've defeated me. Only no one will remember. He's here. Help! The shield. I must move it. Wound.
wounded. Please, help me. The bandage is all that I have. Everything was quiet. It was as though Satinav had played a prank and stopped time. An almost endless moment in which Sadja and the Adept just stared at each other. He didn't understand that his rescuing hand was more terrible to her than a thousand demon tentacles could have ever been. The final admission of her ghastly failure. Suddenly Satinav snapped his fingers again and life continued. As he pulled her away, I heard her scream. Leave me, she called. Leave me. Take me back. And again and again. I can't leave him behind. Over and over. Quieter and quieter. And ever farther away. It didn't take long, and they had disappeared. And that was that. I was right back where I started. Only one thing was different this time. This time I was able to remember. Remember a princess who persevered in the face of the most impossible obstacles. It helped that the Gorian Desert is one of the most magical places known to this world. Several astral lines crossed there and I lay directly among them. I grew ever more powerful, and I practiced and practiced and practiced. After 400 years, I succeeded in refining my spell to the point where I finally found a way to permanently transform my body. I left the desert and set out for Draconia. I had to know what had happened to my princess after our separation. What happened to the only woman who was ever prepared to entrust her life to a shady, magical staff. <laughs> 